I want you to picture it for just a moment. An unbeliever asks you to explain salvation and you say, Salvation is the act whereby God graciously delivers fallen human beings from the consequences of sin through the placement of their faith in His Son, Jesus Christ. Like reading Aristotle to a three-year-old, giving unbelievers this erudite definition would probably make them give up on the whole thing. But if you told them, trust in Jesus, He will pry open sin's claws and He'll let you soar free, they probably would want to hear more. You will have spoken through their minds to their hearts where salvation really happens. Both definitions essentially mean the same, but the second one, full of word pictures, helps us to see, to feel, and to desire deliverance. It is the vividness that makes the difference. So when it comes to communicating through images, Jesus was an absolute master. He used them frequently and skillfully with his audiences to express the difficult truths. He spoke of himself as the vine that nourishes its branches. He speaks of himself as a shepherd who lays down his life for the sheep. And he speaks of himself as the one true light in a darkened world. He also speaks of himself as the bread of life. And so Paul follows in Jesus' rhetorical footsteps while addressing the Corinthians about their problems in 1 Corinthians chapter 3. He uses three word pictures they would easily have grasped and that apply to you and I today. So as we study this passage, let these familiar, concrete images challenge your heart. Let me ask you a question. How does your garden grow? Like the Corinthians, are you growing crabgrass in your garden? Bitter weeds, maybe some weeping willows? Or are you a rose, blooming, fragrant, radiating encouragement to all those who come near you? Just as Paul urged the Corinthians, I urge you today to grow up to transplant the refreshing fruit of the Spirit where the rotten fruit of pride grows, and to acknowledge God as the one who nurtures you to maturity. It says in James chapter 1, verse 17, Every good thing bestowed and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shifting of shadow. Let's take a moment just for our quick materials check. What kind of materials are you using in your construction? Have you paved a walkway of hospitality out front? Have you put in a door of love on humility's hinges? Have you built with the golden bricks of contentment, patience, and honesty? Just remember, you're building will be inspected by eyes that can see into every crevice, every cluttered closet, every storeroom stuffed with straw. So don't take shortcuts. Follow God's blueprint exactly and build your life on His foundation with materials that will withstand the blaze of His knowing eyes. And what about your temple? How much time and energy do you put into cleaning up your life? Where is your passion for purifying your heart from every fraction of an ounce of sin's poison? There may come a time when God says, that's enough. A patient God, yes, but He will only tolerate godlessness for so long. In this lesson, we studied three images Paul used to rebuke the Corinthians. Not to entertain them, but to warn them. So be a mature plant, a quality building, a pure temple. Why not take these admonitions to heart, Christian? Why not make Paul's pictures part of your life and live wholeheartedly for Jesus?